Hello and welcome to The Quiet Time. My name is William Hayes. I'm the minister of Mount Melech and Tullamore Presbyterian Churches. This is a, a little bit of time of reflection and prayer, a little bit of time of reading through God's Word through Lent. And I hope that as you join with us today, that you would know the presence of God with you, that you would be able to draw close to him through these times of prayer and Bible reading, and that you'll be blessed in all that happens. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you're the one who reaches out to us in, our gra in your grace. Lord, before we ever knew you, you made us and you loved us. Before we had any understanding of who you were, Lord, you came to us in your mercy and your life. And Lord God, before we had any great understanding of our need for you, before we had any knowledge of our sin or our brokenness before you, you died for us on the cross, that you might bring to us your grace and your forgiveness and your hope. Lord God, we thank you for your presence with us today. And Lord, we pray that we would be aware that you are with us, that we would be aware of you as the foundation in our lives. That we'd be aware of your comfort and your grace. Your sacrifice for us and your cleansing from sin. And we ask all this in your holy and precious name. Amen. Let's continue reading in Mark's Gospel. And as we continue to read, we come to Mark chapter 7. And starting at verse 24. Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, born in Syrian Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. First let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Amen. And may God add his blessing to this reading of his word. In the the last reading yesterday, we had this moment where, where Jesus was beginning to tell his disciples that, about the the ideas of clean and unclean and, and what they mean. That they don't pretend to, to food anymore, but instead they they talk about what goes on in the human heart and whether we are clean and right before God. And here we move on from the idea of clean and unclean as regards food and we get into clean and unclean as regards people. The Jews in first century Palestine regarded those who were outside of their religion as unclean. And this was all people who were outside of the religion, some of the first century rabbis have, you know, sometimes the most incredible and, and it feels like awful things to say uh, about those who were not Jews. They would say things like that the that the goyim, that the, the Gentiles the were created as fuel for the fires of hell, that the, the Greeks were created particularly for, for this kind of thing. There was a, a deep hatred there for the Greeks who during the, the time of Alexander and afterwards had come along and they had conquered and tried to, to take over the, the Holy Land. The Jews had fought back and with the help of the, the Romans they had managed to, to take their, their land back and it was something that they were incredibly proud of that they had beaten the Greeks and they had sent them away and they had taken on in the, the mind of the, the first century Jew the, the, the kind of image that you know that an English person might have for a Scots person that kind of 
stereotype of the old enemy um, that that you get in in some parts of the the world where people share a border and you get a kind of an old enmity that builds up much more bitter here um, I would imagine than you get between the, the Scottish and English divide or the Irish and English divide or indeed any other country in the world that the English have invaded and the English divide in that one as well. And yet amazingly Jesus goes out into that kind of territory of these people. He goes to Tyre, um, a city-state out with the, the boundaries of Israel, um, to go and to spend some time alone and in secret. And this was repeated again and again in, in Mark's Gospel that Jesus, who has the, the closest relationship to God, still needs to go and spend time in quiet with God's Word. And again he's interrupted. And who should interrupt him but a Greek woman, a Syrophoenician woman. A woman who has come in and has asked him about her daughter, that he might heal her, that he might cast out the demon that is within her. And so here is this unclean woman coming into the presence of Jesus, unclean in a religious sense, unclean in the, the sense of culture and the traditions of the, the culture that Jesus grew up in. And Jesus engages with her in what feels almost like banter. She asks, she begs Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. And Jesus says to her, first let the children eat all they want. For it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And in this back and forth, you, you wonder, has the, has the woman come in with a sense of entitlement and said, right, you will heal my daughter. Come on, heal my daughter, heal my daughter, heal my daughter. Or what is going on here with this? There's a, there's a mystery wrapped up in this dialogue between Jesus and the woman. It's got something to do with her Greekness. It's got something to do with her Hellenic background. It's got something to, to do with the fact that she is outside of Israel. And Jesus says, no, no, the, the children get to eat first. And then, you know, then if there's anything left over, the, the dogs get to, to have that. But she humbly then replies to Jesus, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And Jesus says to her for such a reply, for the witty nature of it, for the humble nature of it, Whatever it is, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So in yesterday's reading, Jesus was saying that it's not about food, about uncleanliness, but it's about what happens in here. And then someone comes in who is regarded as beyond the pale, who is regarded as being unclean, who as a woman and as a Greek is regarded as somebody that Jesus shouldn't be spending any time with whatsoever. And because of her humility, and because of the way that she responds to Jesus, Jesus declares her clean, and then Jesus cleans her daughter of the unclean spirit that has been afflicting her. The same thing happens later on in the book of Acts. Peter has a vision of food, and he has a vision in which he sees all of the so-called unclean food, all of the non-kosher food that he isn't allowed to eat. And he is told by God, you know, get up, Peter, kill, eat. And Peter goes, no, 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 I can't do that. And the vision happens three times. And he realizes eventually in this vision what Jesus had been telling him all along before, that, that no food is unclean, that no food is not kosher. And the first thing that Peter does then is he is visited by some Romans who want to go along and take him to a Roman centurion to go and meet with him and to tell him about Jesus. And we realise there the same thing that we realise here, that all this talk about cleanness and uncleanness is nothing to do with food, but has everything to do with people. 
and everything to do with us learning to burst out of our little religious strictures that surround us and to go and meet and share with and to love others who are different from us and who we regard as unclean. Let us pray. Lord God, we pray that you would burst our boundaries, that you would introduce us to, to people who make us uncomfortable, that you would show us what it is to be clean and unclean in your eyes rather than by the boundaries that we set around ourselves. And we ask all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. So thank you for sharing with us today in the quiet time. God bless you. Goodbye.